Don't be a brother. It's a, we're paper manufacturers. Very good at it. In fact, so good that they made paper for the king in his court. This would have been King Louis the Sixteenth. And they were also bachelors. Okay. And one night, while they had some female companionship over to the house, they noticed that as the women would turn and warm themselves at the fire, that their skirts would lift. <laughs> being, the, being the French bachelors they were, the first thing they thought of was throw more wood on the fire. No, no, no. no. <laughs> These were men of science. They're still men. That's true. Okay. They'd also seen ash and soot float up through the chimney, and they got to thinking, "I wonder if we took <coughs> made a big paper bag and filled it with smoke, because you see, they thought it was the smoke that made things rise. If it would fly." So they went to their paper manufacturing plant and they built the first balloon, this great big paper bag. And remember, 200 plus years ago, paper was a lot different than we know it today. It had a lot of fabric in it, in particular silk. So they built this big paper bag and then they went out to the French countryside and they built a big, stinky, smoky fire. The stinky and smoky were important because they thought the thicker and blacker that smoke was, the more lift you would get. And so they, they were burning horrible things to get that kind of smoke. Things like rancid meat. Firestone tires. Old shoe leather. Walmart, Walmart baggies. baggies. Yeah, those things. <laughs> okay, maybe not 200 years ago, but you get the idea. They got the balloon, they positioned it over this big, stinky, smoky fire, and it began to fill up with smoke, which also did them a favor. You see, the smoke went inside the bag or the balloon and coated it and kept it from being porous. Today, our balloons are coated on the inside with chemicals to keep the fabric from being porous. So everything was working out to their benefit, even though they didn't understand all the science behind it began to fill up with smoke and more importantly heat and as it did it rose up off the ground well there they were in the french countryside and they really hadn't counted on such a success their first time out so they quickly looked around for their very first victim i mean passenger why do you call them victims i don't know so being human what's usually the first thing we experiment on children women. no not children no animals Wives. women well, no not women no Your husband no animals. animals very good thank you 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 can do anything you do with this thing. Right? Yeah, they rounded so, up a chicken, a pig, a duck, and a goat, now, or a sheep. Now, these, these animals actually had some significance. Yeah. You see, they weren't sure you could breathe up there. And so the chicken is a bird, but pretty much a land bird. The duck they figured was fair to spot. The pig has an anatomy similar to ours. And the sheep, he was probably so, so they got the animals. They scurried him onto what was the first basket. They cut the line. The balloon took off and flew and flew successfully. Well, for the most part. See, when the balloon came down, well, the pig landed on top of the chicken, and well, that was the end of the chicken. <laughs> so, aren't you glad you weren't chicken and your pilots were pigs? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Because there was a duck on board, it was recorded as aviation's first quack duck. <laughs> <laughs> they don't get any better. Oh. <laughs> now that I'm out of animals, that's the end of the bad jokes. All right. <laughs> All in all, they considered this a success, and that night, over their chicken dinner, the Montgolfiers decided they would build a bigger balloon and see about flying a man. So they did. Bigger balloon, bigger sneaker, smoking your fire, and by now, word of the Montgolfiers and their antics has gotten out, and a pretty good crowd gathers for the next event, including the King of France. Also president, man's very first balloon flight, two of our founding fathers, John Adams and Benjamin Franklin. Were there. So this great big crowd gathered around. And from animals, we go to prisoners for our next victim. <laughs> victim, victim. Passengers. They got this guy, and they drug him, kicking and screaming from his cell. Where's David? Oh, kind of like David was this morning. Oh, no, 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 no. Got ready to put him in, and the king of France said, no, stop. If this is to be man's first flight, the honor should not go to a common criminal. Well, the Montgolfiers looked at each other. They'd seen what had happened to the chicken, and they weren't about to go. So they began to look in the crowd for the perfect first passengers. Victims. And there they were. Politicians. Oh. Yeah. So they got the Marquis de la Rome and Pilotre de Roger, and that's why to this very day we're called pilots. We're named after Pilotre. Been called worse. Yes, we have. <laughs> well, you have. Ooh. <laughs> These two gentlemen jumped in the basket, they cut the line, the balloon took off, and flew for about 15 minutes very successfully across the outskirts of France. Well, it went so well that they began to do more and more of this throughout the French countryside, but if you can imagine all these years ago, this was also the very first view of the world. Okay? So they would have these beautiful flights and they would start coming for their landings and the peasants and farmers would be working in the farm fields and out of the sky would come this thing belching smoke, stinking to high heaven, a fire on board and what looked to be like a man in its very jaws. They thought this was a demon or a dragon coming to steal their land.
And so as soon as it got close enough, they would pick up their pitchforks and run and stab it until it was dead. Good and dead. Good and dead. Well, even if you're building your own, this becomes a bit expensive. So the Montgolfier said, we've got to come up with ways to identify ourselves as friends so that this will stop happening. So they thought about it for a while, and pretty soon the answer became clear. Champagne. So they would come in for their landing. The peasants would come running with their pitchforks, and they would reach over the side of the basket with a bottle of champagne and say, no, no, we are friends. Come and toast us on the flight. They'd land, and everybody would celebrate. That's why to this very day, balloonists carry with them champagne. It's to soothe the ruffled feathers of landowners whose land we may land on, who don't necessarily want us there. But when you break out the bubbly, everybody's a little friendly. Everything's going great now, and from not too far away, another group has been watching. The Irish. Any Irish? Irish, Irish. Irish? Irish I was. Irish I was. Well, the Irish are famous for a couple of things. They're famous for their prayers, and they're famous for their drinking. They may be famous for their prayers because of that. You may know the prayer all too well. Please, God, I'll never do it again. But the Irish saw that there was drinking and ballooning. Well, and they said, well, that'll be the sport for us. So they went to the French and they said, look, we don't care if we ever get to find that contraption that's full of balloons, but if you'll share a drop of the bubbly with us, we'd be sure to give you an Irish prayer in exchange. So the French said, fair enough. So this very day, we have the balloonist prayer. So, you'll remove your hats. Nick, you want to do the prayer? Sure. The prayer goes something like this. If you repeat after me, it goes, uh, the winds have welcomed you with softness. The winds have welcomed you with softness. The sun. The sun has blessed you with warm hands. The sun has blessed you with warm hands. So you have flown so high and so well. You have flown so high and so well. That God has joined you in laughter. That God has joined you in laughter. And set you gently back. Set you gently back. Into the loving arms of Mother Earth. Into the loving arms of Mother Earth. And your new friends. And your new friends. Amen. Amen. Cheers. Cheers. Welcome to ballooning, everyone.